Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over Mardu Sacrifice. So this is the deck that I recently won the Modern Challenge with and uh, I think it's really strong in Modern right now, especially post Naruto ban it will be, but I think even right now it's um, a very solid deck. It has an admittedly not great matchup into Naruto but beats basically everything else and it's just a really powerful deck and you know kind of has a similar, occupies a similar spot in the metagame as Boros slash Mardu Energy while just being really good into the mirror and having certain much better matchups like uh, Mono Black Necro, for example, is much easier. So uh, right before we get into the deck tech, I do have to quickly shout out my Patreon on there. Apparently there is a sideboard guide for this deck, and I'm also working on a full deck guide, which I will release before SCG Baltimore. Won't be this exact list, most likely. Uh, my final list is only going to be available to patrons. I've been testing out some different sideboard stuff, um, especially, but... Um, Hey, go and check that out. It's uh, you'll get access to all my writing, also a lot of Magic Arena content out there on there, and it's also the best way to support me if you want to see more of this content. Uh, also, join my Discord uh, link in the description uh, if you want to chat with me, get access to upcoming deck lists, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So um, yeah, if you want to be a part of the community, just go ahead and join there. And uh, yeah, let's get into the deck deck. So basically, this deck is built around Goblin Bombardment, uh, which two minute champion lets you sack a creature to ping any target. Really, really powerful card. And the way we abuse it is we just run a bunch of creatures that we want to sacrifice. So we've got stuff like a Johnny and a Coddle Pariah, um, which is an insanely strong card from MH3 uh, that incentivizes you to sack things by, um, you know, if you can sack the other cat, you just flip it. And then you get a really powerful Planeswalker. Um, you've also got uh, Orcish Bowmasters, which comes with two bodies, which is super nice. The um, Orc Army is great to sacrifice because you can make more Orc Armies later as well if you're up on cards. Marionette Apprentice. Is a really good payoff because it just doubles up the damage all of your creatures do while also coming with two bodies as well. And you've got the combination of Guy of Souls and Ocelot Pride, and Ocelot Pride also makes a ton of tokens, which you can use to sacrifice to Goblin Bombardment. Um, and then Goblin Bombardment is our only sack out. We've also got three Village Rights. Uh, it's just a way to get some extra value, flip on a Johnny, especially instant speed, it can be pretty valuable. Um, and the sack has just so much sack fodder that it's a pretty small downside uh, for drawing two cards. So um, it's very nice. Also, it's another sacrifice outlet for Clem the Firstborn in the sideboard, um, which is pretty valuable to have the matchups you want Clem the Firstborn. Um, and then in terms of removal, this deck has a place of Fatal Push, and um, I'm running Fatal Push over Galvanic Discharge because it dodges Sun Cleanser, it kills Flage, kills Nadu 100% of the time. Uh, or, I mean, if you can turn a Revolt, which is easier than getting an Spare Energy. So um, I think overall slightly better. I've also got... Um, some red cards. Amp Raptor, a really powerful card, can get you ahead on tempo, though we generally want to avoid playing it on turn two if you have better options because you can hit something like a Village Rights, uh, which can be pretty awkward, or a three drop. Um, and speaking of three drops, this deck has three of them two Fables and a Flage. Definitely could see running like a second Flage, but um, the mana is a little awkward on it. Yeah, the three drops uh, are really powerful. Only issue with them is that they're a little awkward to hit off Amp Raptor, which is why uh, in this next mana base we've got to Aether Hubs, which not only um, can help fix you, but also if you can just play it on turn two, you can go Amp Raptor and have energy, and that um, is another way to make energy aside from Guide of Souls to power up Amp Raptor. And then other than that, the mana base is pretty standard. We got off Rexian Tower and only one Surveil Land because they can just be a little awkward to draw 22 lands because this deck can be pretty mana hungry and just a bunch of fetches and shocks, two basics, uh, planes and swamp to play around Blood Moon, and we've got a Silent Clearing as. Um, just another way to mitigate flooding. Um, also, I forgot to mention, we have a one of Cthonia Nightmare. Just another uh, sack outlet, grindy value engine kind of thing. Really good at uh, looping uh, Johnny's and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, onto the sideboard. Uh, Gigantic Companion, of course. It's pretty much free with this deck. And, uh, you know, it's it's worth the sideboard slot. Really all I can say about that. Um, Obnix List, really, really good card into control. You can make copies of the Devil with Ocelot Pride. You can also make copies of the um, token, but it is bugged on MTGO right now. If you do that, uh, it will come on an, on zero loyalty instead of the amount of loyalty that the copy was casualtyed for, so I would just instantly die. That's a bug. It shouldn't work like that, but still, Ob is a power enough, powerful enough card to be running anyway. Um, and I've got uh, three Harsh Mentors for Nadu. Um, you know, it's very beatable for Nadu, but um, kind of our best option. I've been testing out some of the stuff. Maybe if um, that pans out, that would be a little better. Uh, Pair of Clan the Firstborn is really, really good into Flage, even good enough to be boarded in against Jeskite Control, for example, um, but definitely into Boros and Mardu Energy. Uh, two Wear Terra is good into Nadu, good into, um, you know, sometimes Necrodominance or 
Pond deck, something like that, but mostly just um, a sideboard card against Nadu. And then a place of thought sees is comes in in a ton of matchups both board, um, comes in with control, combo, basically anything you can think really that isn't a creature based or aggressive deck um, and is just some really excellent interaction, helps a lot against Nadu uh, in particular. And so, yeah, that's the deck. Make sure to um, check out my Patreon if you want more on it. And uh, let's get into the games. All right, match number one here. We're going to reveal Gigantha and we're going to see what we're working with. Uh, yeah, this sounds acceptable. So the Smash Lap is going to be grabbing a Sacred Foundry, and we've got a nice curve with Ocelot Pride. Uh, we are on the play, so that's actually huge for this hand. Um, if our opponent can't kill the Ocelot Pride immediately, we're going to be able to get through blockers pretty easily with Ocelot Pride, or with uh, Orcish Bowmasters. And we have the Fable on 3 if we had a land drop, which is nice. But it's on a Mulligan as well, don't mind seeing that. So if I see any more Mulligans, I'm going to be a little suspicious that it's Tron, but you know, I haven't found Tron to be too bad of a matchup. Um, in fact, this deck is fast enough where some versions of Tron are just favored, which really should not be the case for a Sack deck to a Ramp deck. And yeah, there we go. It's Etron. Um, they've got a Devourer of Destiny. So that is fine. And we're just going to go ahead and lead on this Ocelot Pride, which is definitely getting through. I would be shocked unless there was something I could dismember. Um, the uh, Eldrazi deck does not have many ways to uh, interact with speakers. Kozak's like Command. I suppose Kozlex Command uh, could do something next turn. All right, so they revealed um, Exiled, Rumble, Karn, Chalice. What do they reveal? Uh, I guess we don't know what they uh, put on top of the Exile. Okay, Shifting Lid. Oh. Um, huh. So this is some sort of combo deck? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, to be perfectly honest. Chalice, the Void, Karn, Rumble... Not cards I would expect necessarily from. And this is definitely not Etron. Uh, yeah, I honestly have no clue. Maybe this. I mean, this is clearly some sort of shifting within combo deck. I'm just not sure what exactly my opponent is trying to do because they've definitely got some Eldrazi synergies as well. They've. Uh, huh. I mean, yeah, Chalison one is like really just completely useless here, which is. Don't mind that. Um, I mean, not completely useless, but I've already cast the one that I care about, and this seems like it's just going to be all about racing, uh, and I'll be able to discard some one drops to be able as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we'll either be able to, we'll be able to copy up the fable. Um, what do I want? Probably double... Um, I guess double weight doesn't matter because all my one drops are shut off by chalice. So maybe double red? Yeah, I'll go for double red. Double red, double black. Sure. Um, play Fable. Yeah, Fable's two, blah, Fable's two permanents. Lands a permanent. We already had six permanents, and Ocelot will trigger to make the tenth permanent, and then use Blessing, and we will make some copies. So this is a turn four kill. Um, Pretty sure, yeah, There, there's our Fable. So this is definitely... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I suppose this is not quite lethal. Uh, we can put them to 2 with the Orcish Bowmasters. Um, if we can somehow flip a Johnny or get a Bombardment down its game. Uh, sewing my post spawn, sure. Okay, so Bombardment off the top is lethal. Um, unless my opponent has another follow-up. I'm a little worried about the Shifting Woodland, but I have nothing in the graveyard so far, so I don't think I'm going to die out of nowhere. Um, though they could always dust me, which would be suboptimal. Uh, mm, that actually kind of solves that. So I'm going to discard my two one drops because of the chalice. And, uh, is Flage lethal? Let's see, so I think the answer is by a lot it is, yes. Um, right, because, uh, they block Chalice, take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I'll make two treasures. They'll be able to, uh, Bowmasters for nine, ten. And then Flage to 13. Wait, hold on a second. This isn't lethal. Hmm. Gonna put them to 1? At best? Oh, but uh, Marionette is actually just more damage. Yeah, no. So this should be good. Because Marionette gives me more damage than uh, Orc Bowmaster has done because I can sack the treasures and a creature will die in combat. So we can just go ahead and swing out. And uh, opponent's gonna block something. It's gonna die. They're gonna take their Beats. Sure, they block the Ocelot Pride. Makes sense. They don't mean making tokens, but um, they are 
just dead here. And in fact, they're actually, they would have been dead to the Bowmasters as well, but that's fine. Because Blage is going to be more than enough, like 3 damage plus the extra ping off Marionette for the Sack Trader if I needed it. So I actually had uh, 16 damage there. And yeah, on to sideboarding. So we want our four thought seas, and then we want wear tear against a chalice deck, almost sure. Uh thought seas, thought seas, thought seas. Um uh oh. Huh. Um that's weird. So I have surgical in my sideboard instead of harsh mentors. Uh I was gonna try surgical out um because it can come in against Nado, but also against Glorios, which is a bit of a tricky matchup for this deck. Uh, meant to register Harsh Mentors, must have not saved the change, though I'm still not too used to uh, how MTGO works exactly, but I think, um, am I worried about shifting Woodland? Um, here's what I'm going to do, I'm cutting, I'm cutting Flage, Fable actually seems reasonable into, uh, specifically Chalice, if they're going to be doing that, Village Rides is definitely too slow, and then I really don't like Fatal Push, so maybe I'll bring in two Surgical? I mean, Fatal Push, I mean, they probably haven't thought not to. Maybe I want, like, some copies of Fatal Push, though. Um, Bowmaster seems pretty bad, actually. Um, oops, did I mean to cut a Marionette? Oh, and Cathonia Nightmare is not great, probably. Uh, maybe something like this? I honestly have no clue how Surgical, how good Surgical is going to be. Maybe I'll just, I'll just have one just in case. And then I won't cut a Bowmaster? Because they probably have one ring. So yeah, I think it's fine. Honestly, yeah, not exactly sure what our opponent is doing. If I really need to be worried about Rumble, then I'll bring in more Cathanians. It's a little weird for them to play it in an Etron deck where you don't necessarily have that many forests. Makes me a little suspicious that they have some sort of plan involving it with Malevolent Rumble. Uh, but maybe it's just utility to land and I'm bringing in the Surgical for no reason. I could definitely see that being the case. Yeah, um, really meant to be playing Harsh Mentors, but uh, whatever, too late. Surgical is good, then, uh, you know, maybe I'll uh, end up playing it in my final list, but we'll see. Uh, Devour of Destiny, sure, sure. Uh, that's fine, I mean, I have six. And they, uh, only get to six, huh? Again. So, you know, Etron tends to do that sometimes. And this hand's... Solid enough. I get to go turn to a Johnny, turn three Fable. It's reasonable. Maybe try to fit a Johnny with our Bowmaster at some point. Could be a thing that we do. Uh, nice to not see a Soul Land on turn one. For sure. When it's holding party in our keep for some reason. I'm sure they've got their reasons. I'm actually really not sure they've got their reasons. Not sure why they're doing this, but uh, that's fine. We'll wait it out. Um... What could we draw here? I mean, we could draw our one drops. Ideally, drawing one drops now before Chalice comes down would be nice, though. If I pass on turn one without doing anything, are they really playing Chalice on one on turn two? Um, I'm just gonna play this Godless Shrine. Given that there's only one Surveil in the deck, and I'm kind of happy both drawing lands and spells, I think I want to save the Rock Theater for later. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and check the Bloodstained Mire for a Sacred Foundry. No, I probably want double black. I'll get a Blood Drift. And I can follow up with the basic planes to stop um, dealing myself damage. I think I probably want to play a Johnny over Amptraptor here because a Johnny's often going to be more pressure. And there are some awkward hits off of Amp Raptor. Uh, right, so this is some sort of sewing micro spawn or thought not seer. Well, that are four jobs, sewing micro spawn, sure, sure. That is fine. So now Amp Raptor gets a little better because if we hit Fatal Push, then we can enable Revolt. But I think I'm just going to jam Fable. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to. Ooh. You know, Guide of Souls actually changes that, I think. Um, yeah, because this would actually make this a lot more pressure. I don't mind trying to save Fable Kill after an Olus Dust if they have one. 
Uh, and if I hit Goblin Bombardment specifically, then I can also play around all his dust, which would be nice. So I'll play an Amp Trapper, um, and I'll have the Guy of Soul Strike resolve first, in case I hit my other Fable. And... Weird there, huh? Well, I cannot cast it. But uh, it's not the biggest deal in the world because I'm just going to attack with this cat and uh, give it flying. Alternatively, I can attack with both, give a Johnny flying. Because they're not, they don't really want to block the cat either way. And so that would be 5 damage instead of 4. Honestly, it doesn't sound too unreasonable. It's a bit of a weird play because theoretically you don't want to put counters on a Johnny if you're going to flip it. But I really just want short-term damage here. And I think I think it's got to be pretty crazy for them to block the cat because I have a red permanent. Yeah, so they just take the damage. That's the turn. Um, if they're just going to all this me next turn, might as well get in my beats, right? But we'll see what they've got. Maybe it's a... I mean, it could just be a Devourer of Destiny, in which case they exile with Johnny. Which, you know, is suboptimal, but... If they exile the cat with it, then Johnny's kind of a lame duck anyway. Yeah, it looks like it might just be the Devourer. Sure, sure. Yeah, exiles the Johnny, that's fine. Uh, we're probably just... I mean, I could have also just... Hmm, I don't know. Kind of just valued getting damage in there over everything else. Um, I think I'll go for a Fable and just pass. I can get some looting going. Well, I'm going to play a land. Uh, but yeah, I can just get some looting going. All this dust kind of just wrecks me here if they have it. But I don't know. I don't really see a, a world where I'm supposed to play around it and just lose to them casting more fatties. This was definitely a somewhat awkward draw. With uh, uh, more uh, more marginal cards. Sixty minutes. It's like a world breaker or something. No, kick telling like a spawn. Sure. So they're gonna exile a land. Uh, sure. That's fine. I don't really mind that too much. And they're gonna get a land of their own. Curious what it's gonna be. Yeah, what am I worried about as their follow-up? Mm, I mean, basically any fatty, but if they had one of those, then they probably wouldn't have cast this with going Micah Spawn. Maybe like Amrakul of some flavor, 13 mana or 12 mana, could be an issue. Is this a Malevolent Rumble? No, it's a Trinisphere, huh? Uh, not actually too worried about that. It means I'm going to just be single spelling, but I don't even have great spells to double spell with. At the moment, uh, I'm going to keep that on top. You know what? That actually seems pretty solid. And yeah, I think Spring and Surgical is just kind of silly, and I am going to discard it and Fatal Push away. Who's taste? And then I'm going to play most likely Bowmasters and just jump the Goblin Shaman token to get in. Actually, you know what? Transfer is kind of good into Amp Trapper, but also I drew the answer for it. But I think for now, I'm just gonna get as much pressure going as possible. And this actually gives me decent odds of killing them next turn with Bombardment. Um, as well as, you know, if I can uh, start making treasure tokens, then I can do stuff like kill the uh, Transfer and then follow up with another play. Uh, but yeah, putting our opponent to 10 here. The uh, the main upside of the play with the Johnny is they're going to exile something anyway. This just gets in a lot of damage short term. And this deck often just becomes a burn deck in the later game. Are they just passing? Love to see that. Oh, certainly love to see that. Uh, they're really good in energy. Can't just get to... Enough energy to jump up any something else and also play a goblin bombardment. 
I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack with the Shaman and see if my opponent has anything to say about that. Because um, if I put them to 6, they're just going to be dead. Which would make things pretty easy. Wheeling, that was all. <gasps> oh my god, did not. Ugh. Now let me just skip through my main phase there. Yeah. Uh, Magic Online definitely takes some getting used to, but scoops it up anyway. Okay, so we had Lethal there, but, you know, it didn't matter. They uh, could not stop us on their turn anyway. Could have just played Gom Gom Bombardment, ping them a bunch of times. Well, we'll take it. On to the next one. All right, match number two, and just to give you what we're working with, um, I'm on the play, and that's nice. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. This is reasonable. Um. I'm gonna play the Rock Seed on turn one. Super, super awkward here. This is kind of the reason why I don't want to play more Spray Lands. Um, honestly, I'm just gonna keep it on top. We're gonna have some pretty constricted plays here in the early game because of our mana situation, which is not going to be great, but on the other hand, meh. We just have a bunch of gas. And it looks like we're playing against Demir Control, which kind of makes me want to just. Kind of makes me want to just. Jam Bombardment. Uh, and you know what? I think I want double red over double black. Uh, so I got a Sacred Foundry. Life it doesn't really matter here. Um, getting Bombardment down. Uh, I mean, I could just play a Johnny. But that's really awkward into like a Bowmast. I think I just want to get down Bombardment. It makes the removal worse. It's one of the cards they most want to counter often. And now I can just spam creatures and it really won't matter too much what they... Uh, I mean, it gets really awkward as soon as they run out of cap spells, basically. Drop something. Because if I can resolve on a Johnny, then they won't be able to kill it. Stuff like that. I can uh, kill a frog. They've got one. Um... Really not interested in playing into a Stern Scolding or Spell Snare, so I'll just pass. Just um, really want to make it awkward for my opponent to use their mana here, mostly. If they tap out of my step, that's fine. If they don't, then, you know, I wasted their mana. And, uh... Oh, this is, I guess, the end of their main phase. Let me go there and step. And Bowmasters resolves. That is very surprising. They have their own Bowmasters? Or... Yeah, see. I'm already getting some value. That's kind of crazy. This, this says to me that either they don't have a counter spell or they have exactly like a two mana counter spell and are really worried about what my follow up is going to be. Um, but luckily for them. Actually, what I'm doing is just playing a Guide of Souls and passing. So nothing to be worried about. Because now that I've drawn this Village Rites, I kind of want to cast it at some point. Um, and I also just really don't want to overextend into a Counterspell. Uh, City Sewers, huh? Could cast Village Rites here. But I don't love the idea of that. Now I'm going to cast Village Rites. This is exactly what I was hoping to happen. I play something threatening enough that they have to kill it, and I just Village Rites. Bam. And now we're so far ahead, because now uh, I'm going to hit a land drop, and we're just going to play so many spells. We're already ahead on board. This is going to be nice. Taking Bombardment isn't ideal, but it's fine. We have plenty of stuff to do with our mana, especially with this Flage. I'm really not worried about it. What is this? That's our main phasing. Some sort of value engine type thing. Ooh. I suppose a Merc Tide is actually kind of threatening, huh? Um, maybe you should have given that more thought. What do I want to do? I think I want to try to resolve an Ajani. Play Ocelot Pride first, so they can't kill Ajani in response to the trigger. Um, yeah, play Ajani. 
Oh my god, spell snare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is very losable now. But Mark Tide is just kind of scary threat. We could be dead to a frog. I don't think we are. Take six cards in the graveyard to put it to a 14. So yeah, not quite dead to a frog. But yeah, there's the frog anyway. Um, makes things tricky. Like exceedingly so. We can fatal push the frog. Hmm, yeah. I suppose I maybe should have played. So let's see, what do I want to do here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it probably starts with Fatal Pushing Frog. If I had to guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I'm going to Fatal Push Frog. See what they do. They're probably going to go just eggs out through your cards from the Grow Mark Tide. Yeah. Our Magtide only goes to a 10. Yeah, I guess it's only instants and sorceries that would kill me. So. They're actually kind of far off lethal. Um, and then I could cast Flage. If Flage resolves, then I don't die this turn. I could cast Amp Raptor. I think I'd rather cast Flage, to be honest. This does require Ocelot probably to actually deal damage, so I can get the lifelink and go to 11. I think the shock in the land there was a little unfortunate. The uh, Godless Shine the previous turn. Um, I guess I was wrong about life total not mattering. But yeah, uh, Flage, if it gets countered, so be it. If not, then I can try to kill them next turn. Uh, them, not the Merc Tide, because it has simply got more toughness than they have life at this point. So, yeah, I'm going to go to 11. Make a token. Uh, this is still winnable. Dead to a Bowmasters, dead to... Not dead to the Frog, unless they have an instant or sorcery, so probably dead to Frog. Um, but, you know, I don't even know if they run Bowmasters. Probably some number. Okay. Probably check that. I assume they do. Yeah, they definitely do, actually. What am I talking about? They definitely have Bowmasters. Um, probably at least three or four. But yeah, what's up? Doesn't seem like they have it. They would already cast it if they did, right? 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 Alright, land. That doesn't kill me. Nice. Yeah, Mark Tide's, Mark Tide's kind of an issue in this matchup because it, it lets them race you. They, they have a lot of trouble playing a long game. Is this the second Mark Tide? Sure. Um... I need to hit off Amp after or draw something for turn. Um, yeah, not quite a bring Flage back because of the basic swamp. So, just gonna hope this Amp after hits something relevant. Oh, they're dead. Nice. That is lethal. Okay, never didn't have it. Yeah, to be honest, I don't love how I played that game. I should have given Merc Ted more consideration and just played faster, I think. I think keeping the Edge on the top might have been greedy, given that I can't just play that slow of a game. Oh, but, you know, we had a lot of hits off Amtopper there, to be fair. Uh, but Marionette's definitely uh, a very nice one. Second Merc Ted was a little annoying because it means I. It's difficult for me, for me to get in with Ocelot. I have to stack creatures to make it live to end stuff. Okay, so it's Merc Tide. Gonna cut two Fatal Pushes. Gonna cut Village Rights because of Bowmasters. Gonna cut a Bombardment. I think I'm gonna bring in like two Obnixilis, two Thoughtsies maybe? I'm not sure if I want the full four Thoughtsies. Just a little awkward. Uh, but yeah. And then Ob is nice to have. Fatal Push hits Frog, hits Bowmasters. 
I think it's reasonable. And burning out uh, my Marmonix is not as important, and uh, having N multiples is extremely awkward. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Why not? It's a reasonable hand. I can't really mull it. I'm going to try to time the thoughts used to take a Murktide. Probably. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a Planes and get this guy of Souls down, I think. Thoughts using on turn one is kind of mediocre since I'm not really thoughts using any other one drops. Maybe the hand is like really bad. I get rewarded for thoughts using their only spell and then jamming a bunch of threats. But as things stand, I think I would rather get some pressure going and then try to go like. Thoughtsy is supposed to marry it out on three. Because this guy of souls is not long for this world, regardless, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, so short for this world that it, in fact, instantly died. I mentioned the fact that it would die. Um, Ocelot Pride. Ocelot Pride makes me want a Thoughtsy's here. Thoughtsy's take a Bowmaster as Jamie Ocelot. The, the issue is, it's so unlikely to be able to get through. That I think trying to play towards that is just kind of foolish. They have to have like almost all lands in hand. Uh, unfortunately, playing a two drop there does play into spell snare, but I'm gonna get like got by spell snare anyway, unless I wanna uh, thought seize it, which I probably don't. And I just didn't like the uh, my other options. Okay, Nile spell bomb. Good to keep in mind that they have Nile spell bomb. It's not really good against this deck because there's only a Singleton Flage and a Singleton Chthonian, but maybe that means I just board those out. Are they countering thoughts he's done on the lock? Sure. Um, I think I'll just play Marionette. I think I'll just fetch a Swamp. Blade isn't even much of a consideration here anymore because of the Nile spell bomb. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, gassing out a bit. We need to keep in mind we have a Gigantha, but at this point, like, also I'll probably bring Gigantha hand in and into cast Gigantha. Not gonna race a Murktide if that's what they've got. And it seems to me like it is, otherwise, why are they trying to unlock a Thoughtseize? Sax the Nile Spellbomb. Gonna pay a black. Sure. Guess they're missing something. Maybe it's a land drop or whatever. Well, if it was a land drop, they hit it. That's fine. And they crack it. What are they gonna do now? Main phase under city sewers? So is this a Merc Tide? And they want to mill over another instant sorcery? Or what? Not going to be the biggest Merc Tide ever. What are they? Do they keep it on top? That's worrying. It's not going to be the world's biggest Merc Tide, at least. It in fact is a Merc Tide. Yep, there is the Merc Tide. Sure, only a 6-6. Six, six. Not, not the absolute worst. Ooh. Maybe on a Johnny. Um, so I kind of want to fetch Rockus Theater here, to be honest. I think I will just use the energy. I don't have an Amp Raptor, and that's kind of like the only reason not to, is that I would be able to cast the 3-drop after Amp, off Amp Raptor. But I think I'd rather just get a really threatening board state, where it just kind of comes to the point where if my opponent locks a cat, they're going to be in trouble. There's some argument to not playing a Johnny till after the Ocelot Pride, till the following turn, because Ocelot connects, and then I could make a copy of the 2-1 uh, token. But without a Johnny in play, Ocelot Pride is just instantly dying. So I, I don't think that's uh, necessarily a consideration. I'm just going to talk these main phase. If they have a Bowmaster, that could make my attacks very awkward, so I'd rather find out before I attack. Uh. And it doesn't actually change the clock, so I'm kind of fine doing this. What is this? Subtlety? Four mana. Alright, counterspell. Sure, well. Uh, I'm just going to swing out. I need to be aggressive here. They have the Moon Masters, and so be it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm flipping a Johnny, probably. And then they're gonna 
presumably I'm gonna presumably just trade off with my creatures. Oh, zero a Johnny. If they want to kill it, it buys me a turn, but this is looking rough. Whoa. That's the damage through. That is very surprising to me. I don't really see why you would do that. You're under a lot of pressure. It's like, sure, you take damage anyway because the marionette, but you're going to take the damage next turn? Like, I don't... What is this Bowmaster really going to do? It's, is he going to attack past the Ajani token? Like, I don't... I don't really understand. But, you know. Where is it going? Going face? There's an argument to taking up Ajani, but it doesn't even force him to attack the market, so I don't think it's necessary. Um, I am going to save myself a point of life, I think. Uh, it just seems worth it if they're making this kind of attack. Put it two, one, yeah. I don't know. I think with Bombardment, if they have nothing, I kill them anyway. Uh, sure, we can go to your own stuff. And I will just get a Rock Theater. Doesn't actually put me dead to anything more. Let's just looking for a Bombardment here, I think. Alright, well... All I'm saying is if they don't have a Counterspell... Or, I guess the removal will be bad, too, because they kill a marionette. Didn't I mean lethal before the Mavarma comes down, but then I can try to kill the Merktide. So it's, like, playable. But yeah, this looks like it's getting countered, to be honest. Nope, they're pushing the marionette. The plate I scribed. Alright. Massively punished for blocking with the cat, I suppose. Ah. Uh. Well, I have to sack my whole board to kill the Merktide. And then I'll take one to the Orc Army, so I'll be dead to Bowmaster. So I'll dead to Bowmaster at the last turn as well. And then this is going to be like a two turn clock tops. Uh, if I can resolve my spells. Because of this Gigantha. But we'll see. So I uh, can't do anything here anyway. Um, I don't know, even if... I mean, if they can't kill this Ajani, they're gonna lose slowly, so they're gonna need to find Bowmasters eventually. Ooh. Alright, I'll, uh... I'll just cast Gigantha. Because if I draw, like, a cheap spell, I can try to double spell next turn. I'd rather do it this way, even though Amptaptor, if it resolved, would maybe give me a chance of having me fall. Oh, subtlety, no. Yeah, now I'm dead. Alright, I would have been, I guess I would have been okay if I didn't block with the cat. So I would have been, I would have taken more damage, but then I would have kept another creature and I could have traded off the orc army and then subtlety. No, uh, I'm probably still dead to subtlety, but yeah. Rough. Tough. No, maybe not. Yeah, I don't think I would have been dead to subtlety. Alright, well, I still think I kind of like this configuration. Maybe I don't want the Chthonian Nightmare. Blade is pretty good. Maybe what the third thoughts is. I just kind of really like Flage. Chthonian Nightmare gets really cooked by the uh me. The one of Flage I feel like carries a lot of weight in this matchup. Uh yeah, I mean can't really mull this. I don't know. Got two drop into three drop. I'm just gonna fetch a Rockus Theater and really hope that this fable resolves. Maybe this is a greedy keep, but like, what do I multiply? Like, a, do I try to multiply like a two land or a six? I don't know. Yeah, snap a Johnny off. Not gonna play it here because it plays straight into a counter spell. Uh, but you know, I'll get my, I'll get my marionette. Oh, it resolves. All right. Nice little two for one. I assume they're just pushing the marionette here. Nope. Passing. Didn't have anything. Sure. 
that's all right. Um, probably not gonna attack here with the marionette because of bow masters. Never mind. Oh, you know what? This means fable most likely resolve. Unless they have exactly spell pierce. Can't really think of anything else. Off to a slow draw, huh? Or off to a slow start. Having a slow draw makes those two up. Well, um, yeah, I'll get in. Oop. Yeah, we're good with that. All right, cast Fable. I think this is pretty huge. Um, the one thing I'm like a little worried about is that they could play a Bowmasters and then I can't loop. They don't know my hand is bad. Oh no, are you serious? Why do they have spell pierce, man? Why do they have spell pierce? I think when they're playing like that, sure, maybe they have spell pierce, but. It's just, I don't even think you're supposed to keep it in in this matchup. I don't actually have that many non-creature spells. And I I don't know. But also, like, it's fine later. Like, spell piercing and bombardment doesn't actually work a lot of the time. I don't know. I just I don't like that. I mean, it got me, right? So, who am I to say anything? But I don't know. I just didn't expect them to have that. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Play a Johnny. I think it's fairly likely it gets countered. Um, but I want to resolve this field of rights. And it doesn't get countered. So now I'm going to attack with Marionette. Because if they have Bowmasters, then I'm going to attack the... Uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna build rights the cat, but be a Johnny. This is pretty good, I think. Oh, those are some bangers. Whee! That's nice. I'm feeling pretty good about this game. We've done pretty well. So now they can double lock the marionette, but then I'm just gonna make a token with a Johnny. Er, I guess this is this has basically a very similar result as to just pinging the servo. If you feel really strongly about keeping the bowmasters, that's okay, but I don't think they should. Yeah, so same effect. Um, ping them for one. Actually, no, this is worse, right? Because they could ping it on the servo and then double lock the marionette and I would uh they would keep a one one. So bit of a punt there from the opponent, but that's alright, they're forgiven. And yeah, now it's gonna be pretty hard for them to A stop me from getting a powerful enchantment down, B stop me from getting a red permanent for a Johnny down. Their best way to kill a Johnny is I don't know what spells they have that kill a Johnny, really. I think their best bet is gonna be like attacking it with subtlety, but both of these kind of get around that in multiple ways. Because A, they don't get hit by subtlety. B, bombardment lets me kill subtlety. They have it. Both resolve. Which they would need to for them to cast subtlety. So this is a tough spot. Yeah, I was really hoping to bait the Bowmasters with that attack. But I could um, safely flip the Ajani. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Opponent's uh, deep in the tank here. I think their best bet is probably to try to race us with a Merktide at this point, but I don't know, man. Oh, that's 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 rough. Frog, or I mean, that's pretty good. But uh, uh I don't want to sequence this. I probably care most about. Oh, I probably should be on the Sacred Foundry for double red. Oh, I have a Sacred Foundry in hand. That's why I can get it. Johnny, or up? But... Sorry, don't know what that was. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to play bombardment and have it resolved. Yeah, baby. Woohoo! They kind of have to counter it. This gets really awkward for them if they don't. 
That's the thing. Sure. And then, so I have a couple options. Could attack for two. Could I mean probably gonna. Um. So I could play Fable. Activate a Johnny. Ping the frog. If they want to save it, they need to discard two cards. They discard two cards. Comes up three, four. And I attack for two. They don't block. Untap, kill a Johnny, have Fable. But they can play like a Murktide or something. Don't love that. Play it. Play Obnixilis. Obnixilis will be at even on creatures. It's not giving me life, getting me life and doing damage. So it'll be good into. Yeah. She seems kind of reasonable. So I think what I want to do is I want to attack with a cat first. I'm going to play Obnixilis. Since if they block and discard, it goes to one. I play Fable and then activate a Johnny. Um. Two, three, so they can't actually save it. Yeah, I'm gonna attack the cat. I don't think they ever block. Yeah. Under a fair bit of pressure here. Then I think I can just casualty the cat. And I'm just gonna go face with the Ajani. I'm going to gain a fair bit of life here from the obs. Um, so it's going to be difficult for them to raise. They're going to take a lot of damage unless they start discarding cards, which would make the Psychic Frog much um, unable to actually kill my Planeswalkers. And they're going to be taking so much damage that they're kind of under a lot of pressure from these obs. I think I can beat a Murktide. Yeah, now I'm going to make a 2-1. Two, one. two one's going to deal them 2. Down to five. And the next turn, look, like, what, they... SK for them, they discard two cards, jump the frog, kill a Johnny, play a Murktide. They have one card left in hand. But then I just go, like, jam Fable, activate all my Obnix lists, do a bunch of damage. Devil Token is a guaranteed one damage. Fable is going to be a ton of pressure. I can just go wide. A rough spot for them, even if they have exactly what they need. Three damage off the three damage off the um sink to super was really rough for them. Changes a lot. I think um if they weren't eight, I would have just gone for a fable. Or if they weren't three more anyway, I would have just gone for a fable, because at that point, um it's gonna be much more difficult to actually burn them out, so I'm gonna need to try to grind. One of the reasons I dislike trying to kill a Psychic Frog and forcing them to discard a bunch of cards is they're kind of forced to discard a bunch of cards anyway to kill a Johnny. There's a world where I pick up a Johnny to try to survive the Psychic Frog, but that's a world where Mark Ted is actually fairly close to racing me, so I don't want to live in that world, really. Because they could, you know, cantrip into um, Mark Tide and to just threaten, like, maybe even 17. With the uh, psychic frog activations, uh, but even though like kill me in two activations, just ignore the Ajani, wipe my board, you know, play a bunch of removal spells, whatever. Or they could just have some sort of removal spell for Ajani. Like I guess they could, they could bounce it with support spring, you know. That's that's one answer that they definitely have. Uh, that seems a little sketchy, though. I know it is somewhat like difficult to lose this game. I think uh, I would say I'm very far ahead. Here comes the Merc Tide, I would assume. So, no, that can't be right. Oh. Okay. Well, I think my opponent. Oh, Toxic Theater is pretty good. Fair enough. Uh, but now they're going to have to discard their whole hand if they want to kill a Planeswalker. Or one card to kill the Aw, which is what I would say. Well, no, they can't do that because then they just literally die. So they need to discard their whole hand to kill a Johnny. And then they're dead to Obnix. Oh, this puts them down a board. Yeah, actually, this is really... <laughs> this is not so much of an issue. Well, I guess, okay, time out. Not dead on board. Um, they can kill the Ob, and they're actually not just dead to the Ajani. Because if I were to take up Ob, they could have a card to discard, so I'll make a... I'll make a Devil in the for three. Uh, well, yeah, I guess they would be... 
They'd be dead if I had no spells. They wouldn't be dead if I had no spell. Unfortunately for them, I do have spells. Unlucky. But yeah, really, really tough spot for them. Not sure what they're really supposed to do. Um, I'm gonna down on them. All right, we take down the match. Nice. All right, on the play here once again, and oh yes, please. Okay, so <laughs> it's time to test the heuristics. We've got to pick between a turn one ocelot and a turn one guide of souls. And what is the decision? Is the question. Uh. Hmm. So let's see. No Gigantic companion, so not Boros energy. But it could be basically anything else. Uh. All well, against a six. Well, against a five, Tron. Tron, or they're unlucky. So, honestly, the, the Tron list now it doesn't even mull that aggressively because they don't actually need turn three Tron. They have like 15 soul lands. It's like the E Tron kind of thing where, oh, sometimes you just accidentally assemble Tron, but you're just playing the Tron lands because you're playing colorless cards. Being said, we do need to wait for our opponent to actually decide on a mulligan before, uh, we can go for anything. I think now I'm definitely just going a turn one onslaught probably because this lets me go turn two. Okay, so it is it is Eldrazi. This even more so supports my decision. I'm gonna get a Sacred Foundry to start things off. I'm gonna want double weight anyway, most likely. Uh, and so the fewer turns I have silent clearing I play, the less damage I'll take off it. Even though in the moment I'm taking more damage, you know, three versus one, I would be tapping the onslaught uh, the silent clearing. Next turn anyway, but also if that's shocking, which would be more damage. So, uh, yeah, let's see what they, how they devour. Uh, pick up the exile. Yeah, I like this hand a lot into this matchup because it's just super fast. Um, they can all of us as soon as turn four, I think. I mean, maybe turn three with a nut draw, but usually turn four. And this is going to be like, Asta Pride, a Johnny, Marinette, Zoom. I exiled all of these, so maybe they have a land by hand. Um, because those are kind of all bangers, though. None of them are particularly resilient to Fatal Push. Um, speaking of Fatal Push, because I may want to enable Revolt at some point, I am just going to go for time clearing now. My left arm doesn't actually matter that much in this matchup. No point in running it down for no reason, but no point in guarding it religiously either. We get in. This is, I mean, this is just a lot of pressure. If they have turn 3 Tron, then they will be able to always dust me, to be fair. Um, I can maybe try to like get the marionette down, and maybe... It's going to be a bunch of damage, but not exactly sure how much. Which is kind of the big question. Okay, so turn 3 Tron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I can afford to play on all dust, because I'm just going to Bower of this. Ooh. Are they dead? Am I ever playing Guide of Souls pre-combat? Or anything pre-combat? No? So let me just attack to make math easier. Oh, that is... Makes things interesting for sure. Alright, so... I'm always playing Guide of Souls, I would assume. Let's see. If I play Guide of Souls, play Bombardment. So I have five creatures, four creatures, because I sack to pick them to 13. Three creatures, um, because I flip a Johnny, then four creatures, the other four, put them to nine. End step, I will have one, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, I will have City's Blessing, so I will make token, and then a token, and a token, make three, four, five, six. I can put them almost dead, I think, to like three. If I play a marionette, what happens? Guide of Souls and marionette. Then I will, on my end step, make one, two, three creatures. Have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten creatures. 
Um, I wipe my board. I deal him a bunch of damage, and I have a bombardment in play. I think having bombardment in my hand does a similar amount of damage. I'd rather have bombardment in my hand because I can burn them out more easily than marionette with it. Um, with uh, though actually, not even well. Yes, because of the well, devour of destiny. No, because of the devour of destiny. So I think I want to play bombardment. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, because marionette I think is better into devour of destiny. They played Devourer Destiny, they're dead regardless, so I don't need to worry about that. Okay, Guide of Souls. White, red. Boop. Throw a cat at them. Flip them to nine. And then end step, I will make a bunch of creatures. So, all is dust or bust, but... Possibly bust, even if all is dust. Because I get to put them to two. Right? Yeah, two. I miscounted. That's fine. Uh, those. Yeah, power plant, sure. I missed a damage somewhere. It doesn't, doesn't particularly... doesn't change my decision, I don't think. I think I made this in. But yeah, if I play the marionette thing as I I deal a little less damage and uh Okay, so they're dead. Nice. GG's. Um yeah, that just doesn't matter. I mean they yeah, they scoop. Maybe let's that apart. Okay, so yeah. Didn't have the all this just wasn't even close enough to uh turn three taunt, huh? Not uh not what it used to be. Not when you're trying out Robin Ravenous Juke Power, but to be fair. Uh, so I want my Thoughties, and I don't think I want much else. Uh, Plate is kind of bad. Village Rights is pretty bad. So is Fatal Push. I think I can, like, run it like this. Oh, Henry Nightmare is bad, too, though, actually. Maybe, maybe Flage is okay, because it's just Breach. Um, I really don't have, like, there to be enough sideboard cards for this matchup, but I found it to be not too problematic regardless. I think Fatal Push is Fine, but I want to trim it. Build right, same. Same thing else, same as well. Yeah. Like the card that I'm keeping in the deck, sure, Flage is a little slow, Fable's a little slow, Build right is a little slow. Um, Fatal Push doesn't have that many targets, but hitting Thought Notes here is great. Hitting like a spawn is okay. Ogre's Bowmasters, you know, they have one ring, so not too big of a deal. Um, and, uh, you know, Flatbird cards that are good specifically into this deck, like Damping Sphere or whatever, kind of. Somewhat dead elsewhere, so I don't really want to be running those kinds of cards. This hand is nice. I mean, turn one also is just excellent in this matchup. Into turn two, a Johnny again, as you saw, a ton of pressure. And then we're not going to be fast enough to beat an all's dust, but we can do some bow mastering maybe. And uh, looks like they're going to have turn three Tron again, which is fine on a seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, usually Etron isn't as all in on Tron, but you know, maybe this is like a slightly different version. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a secret boundary. Yeah. Uh, play the ocelot and pass. And I think I'll just go. Probably just. Hmm. It's just so awkward to thought these instead of playing a Johnny because, like, okay, there's an argument to playing thoughts so I can go a Johnny, but the issue is that ocelot probably just simply makes a wider board than a Johnny already. So outside of arguments for mana efficiency, turn three Tron, of course. Um, outside of arguments for mana, whoa. Um. Okay, I guess that makes some amount of sense. Sure. Um. I mean, I'll just play Johnny because it's the most pressure. I'm not getting wrath this turn, most likely. So I'm just gonna jam. And the next turn, I will thought these and decide between jamming an amp chapter and like a blue masters. So I think they have turn three Tron, but not a good enough payoff. I mean, maybe they just have Tron. They don't even need this expedition map, but yeah, it's not that likely. Um, and I was thinking the alternative is that they have like something like a one ring or whatever. That's a good play on four mana, or they're just really scared of the Ocelot pride. And so they would rather um, kill it. Alright, so I am just gonna go Thoughtseize. Um 
I guess like a who's looks command maybe in response. Nope, all is dust and no other cards. They could yes, they could have wrathed us on turn three. Decided to just dismember the ocelot pad instead and save the all is dust. Not sure about that play. How much I love it. Uh, but that's fine. Because now I would say we're pretty commanding position. I will go ahead and attack with a Johnny in case I hit a village rights. Um, because I would want to sack the cat post combat. And now I can hit my three dog because the either hub, two dog plus three card, either hub, and I hit a bombardment instead. Oh, that's excellent. Because now I'm going to go ahead and uh, sack this. And they can besiege the bombardment next turn. But, um,. That's going to be a little too little, a little too late. And also, I can get a Rockus Theater, fix my next draw. I'm really not too worried about that. And yeah, bonus scoops it up. All right, quick and easy. All right, finally starting off on the draw. And let's see what our hand looks like. Oh, this is a snap ball. One land, no keep. Sir. Uh, Rockus Theater makes it like a tiny bit more reasonable, maybe, but it's just not. You really can't keep one landers generally with a stack. Um, I mean, yeah, this will this will keep. Um, guess I'll bottom um, fetch. Kind of keep sound cream. Kind of keep either hub. Maybe I'll bottom the swamp. No, I think. Uh, I mean, it's kind of annoying because I want to keep the clearing. I want to keep the either hub. I want the utility lands. So of these three, which I'd want to keep, I could get, I could just bottom Blood Crypt, turn one Raucous Theater. I don't like that. Yeah. Unlikely to be playing Taplands in the near future because of Fable letting me loot. So I think getting Raucous Theater on turn one is not too worried about that. Especially since I'm already going to be pretty aggressively surveying lands away anyway. Ooh, Fable's not bad. Looks like we're against Jessica Control, if I had to guess. So it could be all flavors of blue or white decks. It's just a fetch land, but you know, I think we're gonna see a Rogan Triumph or a Surveil land. Elegant Parlor. Well, this could be Boros Energy, I suppose. Uh, keep that on top, sure. Um, either way, bombardment into Flage and Fable and all that. Oh, I guess it is energy, huh? This kid control would not run once of youth. So maybe not because they're just off to such a slow start. It makes me think it's not an aggro deck that I'm playing against. Basic Swamp being, of course, the most awkward card in my deck because of Blage, but I'm probably just going to discard it to the Bombardment. Ooh. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm going to cast this Amp after, I think. Uh, most of our threes are in hand, but if we hit a Fable, we're not going to miss because they either hub. Uh, and hitting a 2-drop would be excellent. Yeah, that's, that's all right. It's a decent amount of pressure as long as they don't have a bow masters, which I don't think they do. But yeah, this is this is all right. Uh, what is this like zoo or something? Uh, hello, is this Death Shadow? Death Shadow Zoo, is this you? I am. So what? I'm so confused. I <laughs> my opponent's doing my job for me. I mean, like. Thank you, but, uh, what? I mean, this is, this is a bit of a head-scratcher, I'm not gonna lie. Not even gonna lie. Takes the damage. Sure. What is going on? Like, actually, what is going on? <laughs> Do I play Fable? Do I just, am I scared of the Halfling? Could they? I'm too used to time this. I'm like, well, they're gonna play Minsk and Moon next turn. Grr. Um. I mean, do I just slam Fable? Like, I don't. I don't understand. They didn't have anything last turn with two lands, so and they missed a land off. Presumably, happening is like important, but playing Fable just such a massive. It's just so much pressure. And we can double cast removal spells next turn if we need to. I feel like I just jam it. I mean, I'm, as things stand, I would probably have lethal with bombardment plus flage. Because I can attack for six, and then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen. So it require them not to block. Probably not going to be lethal, literally, but you get my point. Okay, I mean, sure, run, in, run six. 
Uh, also, draw, well, takes up. I mean, I guess they were missing land drops, but like, come on, man. There's so much pressure. Um, all right, so I'm gonna discard this basic swamp because it's the worst card in my deck, and I'm also gonna discard. I think this might probably be village rights. Oh, Johnny. All right. I mean, this is gonna be. I'm gonna go face with this. I don't know, man. I'm gonna kill my opponent. How about that? Yeah, I have. Is this money pile? Like, what is going on? Where's your Leland binding? I'm gonna die. All right. So what do I want to do here? I mean, I could play Bombardment. Um. So, I don't want Bombardment getting removed to prevent me from having lethal. Is where I'm at. So I could go Flage into Bombardment. Or I suppose Bombardment into Flage. If they go to kill the Bombardment, I sack my whole board and then Flage them and it's lethal. Because that plays around like a one point of life, you know, like Solitude Throne Delighted Halfling or something. So I think I'm on board with that. Grab a no, I mean I, I just have so much energy that I'm never gonna use, so I can just use this other hood, like it doesn't actually matter. Um white red bombardment. So I don't even use I don't even need to use the other hub. But I, I was more thinking about if I need to escape blade. In a following turn. Okay, uh wins with peace, sure. To five. Plane. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, sure. Gonna die horribly, I guess. Clee? Goop? Yeah, I don't know. Did we? Let's age you. Let's age you. Let's age you. Don't. You've had a Leyland Binding this whole time? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I don't know, like, I... They really just kind of disrespected my creatures like that. Like, I'm not gonna add a damage, let me just... Let me just take, like, 16. Alright, that's fine. I mean, this is kind of what I was playing around, as some way to remove Bombardment, and yeah, they scoop it up. Um, okay, so... Money pile, huh? I guess I'll just board in... Over a second. Oop. Four thoughts is. Oop. Thoughts is as an Arnia. Three up next. Um. Again, some more proactive deck. Maybe I don't want three up next. Maybe I don't want. Tony Nightmare seems a little slow. They can maybe like go over the top of it. Maybe a bombardment out. Uh, probably some number of fatal. Push a village right, a fatal push. Um, you know, like I'm, I want to kill with the leaded halfling, but I don't see, don't even care about it that much. Maybe I'll keep in the fourth bombardment since they do have leyland bindings. I don't think weird is gonna be good. I don't think they have enough for that. Though killing leyland binding is be nice. Um, I don't think I really want the third obnix. And I think I, I think I just run it. I don't know. I think I just run it. Maybe Flager's bad. I could be convinced of that. But it's difficult to tell without seeing more of my bonus deck. Well, I don't need to see more of their deck to mulling in this hand. And I don't need to see more of their deck to keep this hand. Oh, oh my. Oh my, oh my. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna bottom the up next list. Um, Jesus. Well, I am somewhat in, unenthused about getting. Please. Somewhat unenthused about getting my Ocelot Ren at six, so I'm not playing at turn one. I could just go Thoughts use into Guide plus Ocelot. I could go Guide into Ocelot, Ocelot, but then if they kill the Guide, then I don't get Ocelot triggered. So I think I just want a Thoughts use in this turn. So that would mean getting a Black White Land and an extra Nessie Boundary. And so I'm just going to be taking... I'm literally going to be going to, like, 12 here on by turn 2. Just my own lands. Okay. Um, I do not care that it's 
slightest about consigned to memory, so I will just take the Leland binding. Since that can actually interact, and one ring is going to be way too slow without some help. And if they don't rip something, they're just going to be under so much pressure. Like, an actually absurd amount of pressure. If this deck can do anything, it is just apply infinite pressure. And they just didn't get a trial? I mean, I guess they took the Leland binding, so fair enough, but sure, it out. Like, yeah, that, that, I mean, okay, they get to play one ring next turn, and then, oh, yeah. And then they're going to be very quickly just dead afterwards. Um, my opponent can deny me. I mean, this has been a really weird card to be running. Um, but they can theoretically deny me the life gain trigger, which will deny me Ocelot Pride. So they can they can alleviate the pressure a little, though they don't really want to. It would require some painful um, mana base maneuvers, so fair enough. Yeah, okay, so they get Elegant Parlor, sure. Next turn they play Ring. But, okay, I really want to land here. If I can go land, Ocelot plus Marionette, then I can easily kill them with Bombardment next turn. I'm going to be making like 16 billion creatures. Otherwise, I'm not even sure if I can get up to City's Blessing with playing an Ocelot, so I'll need to play a Marionette, um, which will not get me up to City's Blessing either. Okay, so really, really, really need to land. Though... Uh, like a second Ocelot Pride would actually be reasonable as well. So I mostly just want to land here, to be honest. Um, Johnny, huh? No, Johnny isn't actually that good here. I think I'd rather just play Marionette. Um, and then I can kill them with Barbara Bart next turn, like, pretty easily if i had to guess um i'm just gonna go ahead and um i'm gonna put the three counters on the ocelot just so it doesn't get hit by ren and six i'm gonna have energy next turn most likely um and that would force him to kill the ocelot pride which is like arguably not even the most threatening creature on my board necessarily i mean it is and it isn't because like they they might die to marionette but they don't really know that and it's still arguable whether or not Ocelot Pride is more threatening. Uh, but what is this? Another ring? I think if they have another ring, they're pretty close to just dying on their own upkeep, though. Consigned to memory. Can't see them in a bit of life. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll not. That's actually really good here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. I'll not. Good reason to keep in pushes, I suppose, though. What we need here is not a push to land. On tap land. Second ring. Keeping up Sacred Foundry. Stop! At this point, these are other hand and this is the other hand. And they have a discharge for the marionette, sure. Well, that's um not that cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, city's blessing. Um or I could just play a Johnny. I think a Johnny's probably better. Well, I get the City of Blessing. I get a bunch of creatures. But they're drawing a lot of cards. They have a ton of mana. I don't have to worry about Yuri, I suppose. I'll just throw a cat token, because why not? I'm going to have so much energy here on my end step. It's kind of absurd. Uh, but yeah, ring life gain is... Ring damage is going to get outweighed pretty easily. I mean, this is a lot of creatures, though. Like, this is... This is just dead to attack plus bombardment without anything else. Like, flipping a Johnny or marrying that. So they're going to need some serious business here. So seven cards in hand with one, two, three, four, five, six, ten mana available with the fetch land. And going to be working with 20 life at that point. A little, a little, little sketchy. I mean, less than 20 off because they can sack the fetch land and they, they'll take ring damage on their upkeep, but then they can't consign to memory that. They can consign to memory something here. Yep, they got the fetch land. They have, like, no blue mana. They keep just getting red white lands for some reason. Um, like, I feel like they could, could have gotten a steam vents to get back into the charge, but you know, it's fine. Also, discharging the marionette is both somewhat heads up 
and also somewhat heads down because they just are going to die to this ocelot. So I think that was incorrect, but at least it shows that they're like thinking about bombardment. But yeah, I think that's probably incorrect because I just make such a massive board. Though it is a tough spot for them. Uh, yeah, now they discharge the ocelot. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to like row it, but yeah, I'll, I'll flip a Johnny like that. Dies to the same things, but punish them a lot more for not killing it. So I guess I might as well. Yeah, there's our steam vents. Got so much mana here. Blade, sure. Oh, they get to get back Blade, right? This is brutal. Uh... Okay, so that's why they're running consigned to memory, but... Oh, I guess they couldn't have gotten back. No, they could have. Wait, hold on. What? Bro, my back. They consigned to memory the wrong trigger. Oh no, opponent. Oh no. So, okay. I think depending on what they have in their hand, it's kind of a punt to consign to memory the flight trick, because you really want to kill both the Ajani and the Guide of Souls, so you want to just play it and then recast it. But <laughs> instead, what they did is they countered the damage and still let it go to the graveyard. So now they are forced to kill the Ajani. They go to 20, to be fair. Kill the Ajani. And then I'm going to. If I draw a land, they're like unbelievably dead. But if I don't, I'm still going to attack them for like six in the air plus bombardment. So they still could be dead. But yeah. Wow. Um, I think they'd be in a pretty solid spot if they hadn't done that. I mean, if they had consigned to memory and had nothing else, it would have been kind of stupid. I don't presumably they have something else that I do. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I probably should have lost this game, but now I have a pretty decent chance of winning it because of that. Is my guess. Uh, third bombardment. Like, this this should have lost me this game pretty hard, but instead I'm, I'm still alive and kicking. Um, I'm going to play the bombardment pre combat. Um, actually, let me count. So, let's see. If they have a Besage you in hand, specifically, they can attack for 6, they block uh, 2, 2, 1, they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, they take 10. Go to 10. Then at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, I can paint them for 8. And attack them for 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, putting them dead to ring on their upkeep. So I need to play Bombardment pre combat because I need to sack the creatures that are blocked. Okay. And then I will dead, be dead to a, um, or be very behind if they can consign to memory the uh, one ring trigger, but yeah. If that's the case, so be it. I think I just need to go for lethal because my other option is I got to ping down all math, try to outvalue the one ring on three counters with the flay agent. I just need to try to kill them. And uh, if they got it, they got it. Yep. So, ping yeah for one, two, and then deal you eight damage. And then. Three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna set an upkeep stop, and basically, um, if the ring damage resolves, then I will go for it. And if it does not, then I will probably um, ping down the Omnath or something. But we'll see if this resolves. It does. So now, um, I think they should have dug for the consign because I have lethal on board. But they might have something here, like they. They could easily have... I mean, I guess Solitude also just cooks me. Um, sure, you can draw. Because of Consign, I wanted to let the trigger resolve. But I suppose this lets them dig for Solitude. Solve, okay. Four. Three. Makes me really nervous that they haven't scooped yet, but what can I do? Two. Three. 
one. Please don't do it to me, man. Please don't do it. Zero. 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 No solitude. Zero. 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 Let's go. All right. Four O. Oh. One more for the five O. Oh. Let's get it. Whew. That was. That was close. Almost had a game three there. Oh, wait, we found our opponent right away, so I don't even have to edit it out. Let's go. Two free. All right, come on, let's get this 5-0. Uh, I'm going first. Yeah, I think this hand's going to get 5-0. Easy. Easy, Sneep. I mean, you know, perhaps a little bit questionable here in this hand, but what am I going to do? Either I'm going to go straight to the graveyard. Don't need more lands here. I'll probably find one eventually when it's time to double spell on four, but... I do not need an upkeep stop, and do not need any priority on their turn at all. So I'm slamming a Johnny, I think. Oh, unless I do something like a Thoughtsy? A Tamiya? Tamiya. Alright. So this looks like Demir. Oh. Shocking. See, this is this is the analysis you all come for. It's just me seeing on, on Gunsy going, Demir! But yeah, I'm slamming a Johnny because I have this Chthonian Nightmare to start getting value, and I want to play a closer to the instant speed. Um, Preordain is A-OK. -okay. If they flip this Tamiyo with another Preordain, then, oh, ooh, this is a slow start. This is a very slow start. Um, yeah, I mean, as we saw previously, Tamir doesn't have, like, that good ways to actually answer Johnny. Or flip to Johnny. I am. I'm not even kind of. I'm extremely tempted to just go bombardment, ping Tamio, flip a Johnny, make a one one, ping Tamio, ping Tamio again. Really, really tempted to do that. Super duper tempted. See if this resolves. They could have a force negation. Might get ahead of ourselves. Uh, they do, don't they? All right, fair enough. And if they got it, they got it. It's still two for one them, and I'm pulling ahead on tempo, or I guess pressuring. But uh, yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. All right. I'll see if I play the Sacred Foundry because I'm gonna play the Swamp, so I would have double white. But I don't know. One of the double black in case I, because of Cathonian and Bowmasters. All right, still not too worried about them blooming Tamiyo to you, to be honest. Man, Force Negation. Kind of annoying. Yeah, so if they play a land, stack two, they can flip Tamiyo, tick up to four, attack it to three, play Chthonian, probably main feed almost? Uh, consider, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so this is pretty telegraphed that they have something. Ooh. Curious. No. I think I'm just gonna lay Guide of Souls. And attack Tamiya for one. Really do not want to get hit by uh, Stern Scolding slash what is more likely a uh... Man, I keep forgetting what it's called. Uh, spell Snare. Uh, for no reason. Gathonia Nightmare is very interesting. This, the reason I said ooh is I could use it to put three counters on a creature, but then if Guide of Souls dies, the Gathonia Nightmare is just stranded, and that seems extremely suboptimal. Since it does seem like a very powerful card here. But what is this? What are we main phasing here, huh? It's a Mark Tide. I uh, honestly could have seen that coming really easily. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I mean, this was a pretty good start for them. That is really annoying. This is not a counter spell, huh? Though, in this case, we can actually race it pretty easily. Because we just have so much life gain, and we're on 20. Because our aimless, perfect mana base. Um, unfortunately, highly unfortunate... Amyo just makes attack so difficult. So what are we doing?
Um, this is really, really annoying. Kind of want to just. Oh man, man, well, what do I even want to do? Um. Yeah, put the counters on that. The counters not work. Text for three, four, five. It's not even close. Um. Guess I'll. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to play the Chthonian, but both black, borderless cards. Whatever. Oh, that's actually excellent. Oh, that's funny. I guess I guess that was actually the correct play in hindsight. I I, I spent so long talking about the spell standards, just was going to not play around it. No, actually, you know what? That was intentional. I, I, I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Um... So, interesting thought here. I could sack the Bowmasters. I could sack the Cat. I don't want to sack the Cat. Yeah. Is it time for the Cat to fight the Bullet? No, because I could just attack with the Cat and put three counters on or two counters on it, and then they're going to block. I think I actually sack... I mean, I think I just sack the Orc. Having two Bowmasters in play just makes things pretty awkward for them. Um, put it to eight. Get a bunch of energy. And then just attack them. Yes. Three counters. Or two counters. They have to block. And they in fact do. Flip a Johnny. And then this this does several things. It forces the Merktide to attack. Um a Johnny. I also have this Chthonian nightmare, though they're probably gonna they could I think it's they can never actually down tick Tamiya because I just have creatures in play. Um so it forces the Merktide attack, so then I can um crack back with the now buffed up cat and actually connect. They can't really draw cards because of the bowmasters. Psychic frog is kind of annoying. But if they, don't, if they don't have a counter spell for Chthonian, this is going to be really bad for them as well. So what am I doing? I think first things first, I just play Chthonian Nightmare and see if it resolves. Kind of, yeah. All right. Sag. Um, This is still fine, though. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack them. Put your counters. They can not block it with the frog at the moment without the frog. They, they can only chomp because they only have one card in hand. Um, so they go to five. And then I'm going to bring Giganta to hand, and try to kill them with Giganta beats. Uh, I'll just keep the land in hand. They do have some looting effect. And then I have a lot of good draws here. Fables, Lage, more Bowmasters, etc. Bombardment is lethal. Uh, 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 don't know if my opponent really wanted to do that one. I guess the yeah. <laughs> um kinda kinda questionable. <laughs> uh that's just Lamau. Uh yeah. So I think yeah, I think opponent just kind of accepted that they were dead there and wanted to be a little silly, which you know, fair play. But uh yeah. On the sideboarding, huh? Up next. Thoughtsies. Probably two up next, two Thoughtsies. Do it the same as last time. Trim, two Fatal Push, one Village Rights, one Bombardment, and 
What was the last thing I cut? What was the last thing I cut? Maybe, okay, on the draw, I think, hold on. Oh, that is. Hmm. On the draw, I maybe want to trim an Ocelot Pie because of Bowmasters. How about that? And we'll bring in a third Thoughtseize. I think I kind of like that. I assume they have Bowmasters thrown. Ocelot's kind of a lot worse on the draw. And I can be a little bit more reactive with Thoughtseize. That being said, here, like, here's a hand with a bunch of cards that I boarded out some copies of. But this hand's great. No, no complaints. Don't get me wrong. No complaints about this hand. Might not even play the Ocelot on turn one because of Bowmasters. Let me let me check M2 Goldfish real quick. Hold on. Um, modern metagame M2 Goldfish. Because I haven't actually gotten the chance to play against Tumir too much until uh until this league. So let's see. Uh what are Tamir control decks playing? Tamir Merktide. I just wanna I just wanna make sure make sure that I'm right about this because I haven't seen the Bowmasters. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Bow, Bowmasters, yeah, they run. 3.9 and 100%. Okay, okay. So, um, really, really, really not eager to play this. Uh, I'll slot that into that. I think I'm just gonna get a rock of theater into a plane here. And, uh, I'm fine fetching early because I just bought him. Just surveil away any land, basically. Cameo on the play is pretty annoying. Maybe I should be keeping in more fatal pushes. I'm a little surprised, to be honest. I, uh, No land. All right, that's uh, that's fine. That worked. That is a okay. Second amp chapter, huh? I mean, zero percent chance they don't counter my play here, and I kind of want the bombardment to resolve so I can go bombardment plus ocelot pride. So. I think I'll just go Marsh Flats, Planes. No reason to take unnecessary damage here, and I want to thin my deck anyway. And just play Amp Raptor. And say, uh, yeah, Spell Snare. So I feel like if you're going to keep a one lander, it has to be a one lander with your best cards in the matchup, and in this case, their best card is Spell Snare. It looks like they missed their land drop again, which I don't mind. Because uh, it's going to make the game a lot easier. Um, okay, well, now I can clear the way with the Thoughtseize. Actually, don't mind that at all. Um, though, what am I doing here? Am I just fetching a Swamp? Probably just fetching a Swamp, so... Might as well do that first, so I can play a Red Spell. Uh, not too worried about Sleage. By the time that I'm escaping, I'll probably have drawn any other land. <laughs> okay. Guess I'll take the only castable card. Death Shadow. So this is a really non-orthodox list, basically. Um, yeah, I'll take the, uh... Well, actually, maybe I won't take the Fatal Push. You know what? What am I worried about? Maybe Toxic Deluge. Maybe I just take the Toxic Deluge. Because once they hit their second land, it's going to be pretty easy for them to hit their Lord. I think I kind of like just going... They Fatal Push it, and I have Village Rights. I like that. And this doesn't... This isn't that telegraphed. I feel like a lot of players... Like, it won't be that telegraphed, because a lot of players are just insanely scared of Wrath. So they'll do, like anything, including just kind of handing over tempo to a player that spans good, but I think this just sets up my future turns so well, and I am a little worried about just, like, getting flood beat screwed kind of thing, so um, I think I like this. No land, no land, no land. Oh, that's that's not going to be a land. Unlucky. Two top. Yeah, okay, so now they're hitting one of lands. For sure, but that's fine, because, uh, Got our value. Ooh. Fine. Well, let's just go ahead and cast Bombardment. And no, it's it's really silly to try to kill this Tamio. Like it's just they have a second one. Why would I do that? To be kind of really stupid. I think I think I want to play a 
Johnny. Because it attacks for more than Marionette, and they can't really kill it. And I would rather it resolve. And they scoop it up. Let's go. That is a trophy. All right. Wait, we're so back. Let's go. All right. Okay, okay. That's nice. Okay. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm really excited for something that honestly happens pretty common for me. Bit of a flex, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, point is, because I really wanted to both get a trophy so that I could tweet about it, and I was recording, so this is just, we're, we're, we're gaming. We're, we're really gaming. I think this puts my overall record in leagues with this deck, like 5041450 in leagues, plus 9-1 in the challenge, so actual literal 90% we're in with this deck, which is kind of absurd. So, <laughs> love, love to see that. Really, really love to see that. We're so back. Um, <laughs> wow, that's that's excellent. So yeah, so we faced Demir twice, we faced uh, Eldrazi twice, and we faced uh, some sort of some sort of Omnath soup from uh, six months ago. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think I think that's really strong. Uh, Surgical never got boarded in except for that one time where it shouldn't have. Wait, hold on. Yeah, see. I got Arash Mentors. Okay, no idea why it had surgicals in there. Anyway, didn't get boarded in, so whatever. Um, didn't really get to find out how good it is, if not. Um, shouldn't have boarded in against the Shifting Woman deck, whatever. Um, but uh, point is, this deck is great. I think, it, I think it's just really good. I'm going to be playing at Baltimore, and um, hopefully I will do well. It'll be my second ever CG Con, and both of them will have been on Pretty Leaks Weekends. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, Bloomboro shakes things up, but I, uh, it doesn't seem too, too likely. Um, but yeah, um, overall, I don't know, wouldn't really make any changes to the list aside from some sideboard stuff that I'm working on that, um, uh, if I, uh, if I change my list any, then, uh, uh, it won't be revealed. This is, uh, this is for all intents and purposes, the list I recommend. And then if I make any changes, it's going to be patron only, um, in my guide, which you should check out. I guess I haven't written it yet. I'm not sure if this video will go before I finish it or after. Uh, because um, I'm gonna be like driving down. I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work, but um, you know, check the description. If it's there, great. If it's not, there's still a side regard on my Patreon with some matchup notes. Um, and yeah, that'll pretty much do it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching, especially if you've been to the end. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.